Today let's take a look at the ST5S Smart Tweezers from Advanced Devices. I'm not much on unboxings, but here's what you get with the basic setup for the uh, Smart Tweezers uh, model ST5-S. The device comes in a nice hard case, padded. Looks like there's options available, but um, I didn't see those when I was placing the order, so that's this is the basic one I think that I ended up with. Um, comes with a, a pretty good user manual here. Covers all the basics about the menus, generally what to do, how to do the measurements properly, uh, needing uh, to use different modes. It comes with a, uh, it is rechargeable, has a lithium ion battery in it, and uh, so, or a LiPo battery rather, and it comes with a uh, USB micro and a power supply. It also comes with a little guide to the menu system, and I found that to be very useful, and a uh, certificate of calibration. This doesn't show the exact values that you uh, that it was measuring, so if they used a standard 100 ohms, exactly what did it get? It's rather, uh, or rather, what did it read? It's, it's more the uh, whether it's within certification and, and what the general tolerance was. So we can use the little uh, toggle button here on the side to control the menus. There we go. And we can make various, we can change various settings, such as the, uh, in the system, including the display. I can change this to be left-handed, which is going to be very handy for me for a little while. Uh, and I know there are probably uh, lefties out there who are going to appreciate that. So very nice touch. Uh, lots of other uh, options available and settings uh, in the menu system. It's a little hard sometimes to get a good focus on this screen, but it is uh, very clear. Although it's small, it is very readable. It's very bright uh, OLED display. One thing I really like is this thing is uh, fairly compact uh, lengthwise compared to um, really any of the others, and it's also very light, so very easy to manipulate. Let's see if we let's go ahead and test out our uh, inductors here. I'll have to zoom in just a bit. So at 10 kilohertz test frequency, the 5 point, the, the 47 uh, microhenry that everything else has been measuring as 56 or 57 is coming in at 58 and a half with a resistance of 1.18. And the rating for that device was uh, from the spec for that device is uh, 1.23. So very close. The 15 Micro Henry is coming in as uh, 15.29 with a 520 uh, milliohm resistance, and sure enough, we're pretty close. We're at 470 milliohms on the spec. And finally, the little 4.7 Micro Henry device comes in at 4.05 and 213 milliohms, and the uh, rating on the package is 180 milliohms. So again, very close. I think that's all really reasonable. Uh, for for uh, quick readings on a device like that. Now let's set the capacitance. And I've been uh, using this just in uh, manual mode here. The auto works pretty pretty quick too. We'll go into capacitance. Let's see what the well the the spec 22 microhenry is coming in at 15.4, which is pretty close to the other devices. The 100 nanofarad is reading at 96.99, again very close. And finally the 22 picofarad is coming in at 22.49. So that looks uh, very close as well. And uh, one of the great things about this is it really reads fast. One second, this is currently I think defaulted to one update per second. It can be changed to I think update every half second. And that is really quick, especially compared to the uh, older RC100. All right, we'll do the diode check next on the LEDs. Showing not a diode, so it's not reading that. And the green is not showing up as a diode uh, either. So we'll have to take a look at the output voltage of this and see what's going on. 
Now if we just use a standard uh, signal or rectifier diode, I'll put that down here, and let's take a reading of that. And you can see that, that the LCR shows which direction the cathode is and the anode. Really handy. I like that. It's not really showing me any other data about it, though. So on the diode test, let's take a look at the voltage and see what we get. Well, in diode mode, we're getting not much. Let's try the AC range. Ah, we're getting 0.9 volts AC. So let's take a look at that signal. All right, with, so with it's hooked up to the scope, we can see that what we have is a nice sine wave. And we are showing RMS 941 millivolts with a peak-to-peak -peak of 2.6 and a frequency of 1 kilohertz. So that's how it's uh, measuring the diode. And with the RMS of 1 volt or less, it's really not going to pick up LEDs very well. Not even a uh, low-current uh, red LED probably. So that's why it isn't working for uh, my, my LED tests. That's too bad. I really like have, being able to test the LEDs right as I'm about to drop them on the board. Let's try out the resistance function on the smart tweezers, and we'll use the DMM Check Plus again for that. So on the 100 ohm resistor, we get on the 100 ohm resistor we get 100.0. On the 1K resistor, we're getting 99.7. On the 10K resistor, oops, if I can hold it in place properly, we're getting 9.995K. On the 100K resistor, we're getting 99.97K. So again, very accurate uh, resistance readings on the DMM. I like that quite a bit. With the tweezers closed, we're reading uh, 29 or 30 uh, milliohms, and that's uh, listed in the specs. Uh, you need to uh, expect around a 25 to 30 milliohm offset. Uh, so if you go in to measure uh, milliohms, you'll need to use the uh, offset function in this when measuring, say, a uh, little resistance shunt or, or a, a little current shunt or something like that. So now let's check out the tips on this thing. First off, can the tips uh, be attracted to a magnet? No. No problem with that. That's great. Expect that, though, out of a, a really well-made device. Uh, the tips are very precise um, in this close-up. You can see how the tips close pretty well. Uh, they're even uh, laser etched on the side. So with four sets of tweezers, what do we think? Well, the XTEC RC100, this is junk. It was really not all that great when it was new, when it first came out. And it's really not something to buy today, definitely. Uh, so don't do that one. The Maztec, uh, it's cheap. I think these are selling for maybe 20 bucks now. Uh, or maybe you can get them for less. So it worked well. It had a good diode check. Oh, you'll need to mess with the tips a little bit. But if you want to check your uh, capacitors or resistors or diodes right before you put them on the board, um, this is the tool for that. It'll do all of that. It uh, The tweezers actually aren't too hard to press. So you can actually do it uh, without messing with your component placement too badly. The tips might not be the greatest for placing components. Uh, maybe you can work around that. So this is definitely, uh, given the price, why not pick one up? This is a fairly full-featured device, but coming in at 100 bucks, is it really worth it? Maybe not. Is it ergonomic? <laughs> no. They, they put a small bulge in the back for the batteries. Um, that's about it. The tweezers are actually kind of hard to press together. Um, so it's okay for measuring, but you wouldn't want to try to place components with this thing. N no way. But it is accurate. It does all the uh, usual LCR functions pretty well. Uh, it's okay on diodes, but again, it doesn't do everything. Then we have 
the uh, top of the line uh, ST5S Calibri and this thing will pretty much do it all well <laughs> except for LEDs it'll do everything except LEDs and it does a good job of it it is very light to handle you're not going to get tired holding this for an hour placing components I don't think uh, the tweezers are very precise they work quite well uh, they're very it's got a very natural feel to it so which one to get well the Maztec works really well and it's cheap it does um, most of what you'd want if you want to just measure some capacitors and resistors and diodes before you put them on the board and why not pick one up if you can get it for around twenty dollars and the STS Calibri uh, the ST5S hey it's definitely nice it's very nice and so if you're at the top end of the price range or you need that extra functionality this is the one to get uh, generally I'd skip this beast and I don't think they even sell this thing anymore but maybe you'd find one don't buy it